Okay, for this week's discussion board, we had to read the first part of The Rich Get Richer and the Poor Get Prison. And the first thing that I took away from reading this was about the growing prison populations and the so-called side effects from that. So the prison populations have been growing rapidly due, in my opinion, solely to the fact that we put way too many people in prison for these small drug offenses. And that's why our prisons are overcrowded. Like if somebody gets caught with weed and it's like their second or third offense, they get prison for it. And like even selling drugs, I feel like that much time in prison is, it's not gonna help them obviously. I'll, two strikes on the wrist and they're still doing it, nothing's gonna help them. So why send them to prison? Why not send them to a place that c might could like keep them from doing it as much and maybe later down the road would stop them from doing drugs like a halfway house or some kind of therapy or something like that instead of just sending them off to prison and giving us huge prison populations. And um, another side effect that I do agree with with the prison population is uh, you get a bunch of these younger kids, like I, I say kids, but I mean like 20, 21, you get them in prison and it only leads to them being bigger criminals when they get out because they're around these older guys and they learn ways in which to commit crime differently. And so when they get out of prison, they just go back to being thugs and being criminals. So the growing prison population, I feel like we should stop putting so many people in prison for these small minor drug offenses because uh, it, it costs a lot of money to keep somebody in prison. And I just think it's unnecessary to have that many with drug offenses behind bars. And uh, the book uh, mentioned how uh, the police have played a role in the declining crime rate. And I agree with this to a degree, but at the same time, a bunch of people that do crime, they could care less about the police. They don't care if they get in trouble. They don't care. They feel like they're superior to the police. So the police mean nothing to them. So in some instances, police do play a role in the declining crime rate, but I don't believe that is the sole reason that crime rate is decreasing. I believe that crime rate is decreasing because um, there's uh, these programs out there that helps people and the more programs that are becoming available, the less crimes we are seeing committed. So I believe that is a big help. And the book mentioned three reasons in why which uh, they believe crime is committed. And uh, the first one being we are too soft. And uh, this basically means that we give soft punishments for higher crimes. And... Um, I I do agree with this, but to some degree, some moments we are harsher than we should be. Going back to the drug, uh, the criminals that are behind bars for drugs, that's a little bit extreme for drugs. Like, they could be out here murdering and robbing people and stuff, but no, just because they smoke a little weed, but that leads to them having years behind bars. It it just makes no sense to me. So uh, that would be on a case-to-case -case basis, whether we're being too soft or being too harsh. And the second reason was it's just a cost of modern life, which means basically we can fight it, but we'll never fix it. It's always going to be there. It's just something that comes with life. And uh, I wouldn't say that there's not a possibility we could stop it, but... It would take a lot of work and stuff that nobody's going to want to sit down and do. So, and the third one, just blame it on the kids. This, we usually blame stuff on younger kids, juveniles, but that's without knowing that their parents or somebody in their family probably is a criminal and has just rubbed off on them and caused them to go down the same path. So... 
this is the one that I do not agree with. We should not blame it on the kids. We should blame it on the response, supposed to be responsible adults. And uh, because kids look do what they see adults doing. They look up to the adults. And if they see an adult breaking the rules, it's going to make them want to go break the rules. Especially if it's one of their parents. And uh, he said, the author said, another reason for uh, increasing crime rates is poverty and inequality. And especially in the world we're in today with what's all going on, inequality does play a big part in uh, crime. And po poverty as well, because if you live in a poor, rundown neighborhood, you don't have a lot of money, you're barely squeaking by, that's going to make you want to go commit crimes in order to get money to support your family. So, and the last comment I have is that prison produces more criminals than it cures. And that's what I said at the beginning of this presentation. Uh, you put a bunch of these, like, non-violent offenders behind bars, and they're all the time seeing these harsher uh, criminals, criminals that have done way worse stuff. They're hanging around them, and they find out new ways to commit crime, and... This hurts them when they get out of prison. They go back and they commit more crime and they find themselves right back in prison. So I believe this is why I've said this whole presentation that nonviolent offenses should be looked at differently than violent offenses. You, you shouldn't put a some somebody who was caught with half a gram of weed, you should not put them in prison. Even if it's their third offense because... They're just going to get out and smoke again. It's not going to help anything. So why waste the money to put them behind bars for something that's not violent? And yeah, that's pretty much all I have.